I always enjoy this weekend because you have Army and you have Navy. It is a rivalry among rivalries. It'll be tomorrow in Philadelphia. Uh, I think it's going to be a fascinating game. It typically always is. It's the 118th Army-Navy game presented by USAA. And again, it'll be Saturday, December 9th in Philadelphia. Uh, to talk a little more about it, we have the COO of USAA, Carl Liebert, uh, kind enough to join us for a couple moments. Also a uh, graduate of U.S. Naval Academy. So I'm sure we'll already uh, hit it off since I'm going to go for Army tomorrow. But uh, Carl, <laughs> I appreciate it. How you been, my friend? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, we appreciate it. You know, I was telling uh, the listening audience, this is a game for about 25, 30 years that I would always kind of uh, bookmark and watch it with my father who went to Army. And I have a, bun a bunch of relatives wow. in Army and Navy as well. Um, and yep. it's a fascinating game. And because you look at all these streaks, right? We always talk about all these losing streaks and then how Army would start to win and then Navy would get off the schneid. And and I think right. if, you're not a, if you're not a college football fan, you still have to watch this game because it means so much to both these uh, respected uh, academies. Yeah, and, and I think even bigger than that, it means so much to our country, right? So as we come down and we think about what goes on at these two service academies and what these these young men are going to go do for our country and, and all the cadets and midshipmen that are there and support the men and women there, this is um, it's so much bigger than a football game. Yep. And, and I'm like you, I... You know, my grandfather uh, served in World War II. He used to, on this day when the Army-Navy game would play, you know, he would sit down and we'd, you know, back when we only had four channels, we'd sit down and watch the Army-Navy game. And that's just what we did on this Saturday uh, in December. So uh, it, it's pretty special to me as well. Yeah, and it's funny. I was saying this too. When you when you watch the game per se, again, if you haven't really followed it, right away people think it's going to be one of these games where oh, it's going to be a passing attack. No, you got the number one and the number two uh, best rushing offenses in the country. So forget about <laughs> yeah. pass. But again, that yeah. they're tight games. They're low scoring games. Which if they get to the yeah. fourth quarter, that's what makes it so appealing. Well, it makes it great, and uh, I think tomorrow, you, you guys, you know what the weather forecast looks like for us tomorrow yep. here, so um, it's a made-for-TV event, especially with Army coming out in their, their white uniforms. There might be a, uh, three to five inches of snow here, and, and Navy coming out in their Blue Angel uniforms, and you know, it's just a it's 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 a made for made for a TV event tomorrow that we're pretty excited about. But I say that to um, you know, just for all your listeners, it's uh, it's one of those games where it doesn't matter the records, right. it doesn't matter the streaks. It, it matters who comes out and executes their game plan. Yeah, and and the one thing is too when you when you watch some of these games over the last several years, I mean, on both sides of the ball, I mean, uh, some of these games have just been. Uh, gut wrenching to watch, you know. So, uh, you yeah. talk about some of the field goals, some of the missed field goals, yeah, uh, some of the right, fumbles right. late, and you just you 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 really break. You know, your heart breaks, and it feels because yeah. this is it. This is their high water mark for these kids when they go on and they proudly serve the country. But from competitive football standpoint, it's a rarity if uh, any of these kids are going to have an opportunity yeah. after they serve to play in the NFL. So you can see how much it means to them. Yeah, and and I think that's one of the cool things about it. Not only means stuff to them, but it it means stuff to uh, it means something to all those who honorably served our country, and and they take pride in it. And you know, it's funny when you see families that take sides against our with Army and Navy, and you know, year round they're all very supportive of the military. But on this Saturday, everybody <laughs> picks a side, and and uh, there's lots of there's lots of trash talk going on in between. Well, I was going to say, you probably trash talked to a lot of people from 2005, <laughs> right, to two, 2000 and, uh, what was it, uh, well, 2015, because Army won last yeah. year, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Army took it took it away from us last year, and, and as I remind people, you know, it's time to start another streak. So I'm, I, the goal is not to let Army start a streak, so that's the that's the goal, And, and uh, but but I would tell you, uh, Army's coming in 8-3, and three, and um, they've got a great program and a great team and and uh and i just uh it's great to see them coming back the way they are because i think um i think this is uh, going to be an exciting game yeah the kid bradshaw is a very good player oh. like i said you don't have to worry about him throwing the football but the fact that no. you're talking about a quarterback with that read option or when they do yeah. any type of wing t you know he's just he scrambles he runs around and that's one of the reasons they average about 370 yards on the ground yeah, and, and you know, you think the Army's won. Gosh, they've had four games this year where they didn't throw a single yes, pass that they won. Of. <laughs> and and so exactly, right? So 
So um, it's going to be a, a, a slog tomorrow as you look at these two teams and go at it. And, you know, and I think Navy's a little banged up and they don't really, uh, they haven't really solidified a quarterback um, for the whole season. They've platooned a lot of guys. So uh, it, I think it's going to be exciting. Again, a couple minutes on a football Friday right here. Rich Quinones, Carl Liebert, EVP and COO USAA, and of course a graduate of U.S. Naval Academy. We have the uh, another meeting of Army and Navy tomorrow. Uh, was it 117th? 117th? Yes, 117th. And wow. um, this this is the 87th game in Philadelphia. I, so I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a special city for this. It is because I remember years ago. I mean, you you really go. I mean, we're talking when when it, when it really first started. When it was in New York at the Polo Grounds, uh, Franklin was, Field, huh? yep, Yankee Stadium, yep. and then you started to get the old Municipal Stadium back in the '30s in Philadelphia. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, <laughs> I told you I I get into this game. Um, and no, right. <laughs> how about um with the old vet and then having it a couple times in Giant Stadium? Do you guys foresee in the yeah. future though because a couple years you had it in M MT Bank Stadium. You had it in FedEx it, Field. Um, mm -hmm. is, is Philadelphia, does it seem to be the home going forward? Yeah, you know, it is. Over this next five-year period, uh, through, out through 2022, it'll be in Philadelphia. With the exception of uh, 2021, we're going to go back to the Meadowlands and play it there because it'll be the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And, yeah. um, and so one of the things we want to do is bring the game back to New York and uh, really honor all those first responders and families and everybody who gave so much uh, at 9-11. So other than that, it's going to be here in Philly. And, and as I said, 87 times uh, after tomorrow, it will have been hosted here in Philadelphia. And this city this city knows how to open its arms for um, for Army and Navy. What's, uh, what's your fondest memory um uh, with oh, these games, I mean, does one well, in particular you know, stand out? I, yeah, I look a lot of them just from the games that I've been able to go to. And but one of my fondest memories, I was a plebe at the Naval Academy in 1983, and um, it, it, many people, you, well, you know your trivia, but in 19, uh, 1983, uh, we actually took the Army Navy game to the West Coast. It's well, the Rose Bowl. Went to the, it, was, it went to the Rose Bowl, so yeah. I was a plebe. And got to go uh, out and uh, see the play, cheer on the midshipmen at the Rose Bowl. And uh, one of the things we did at my company, we uh, we had been working on sheet posters all of the fall, and we hung Go Navy on the Hollywood sign. We got up in the middle of the night and, and climbed down the hill, and I, I had no idea how big the Hollywood sign was. I grew up in Indiana, so um, here's a little kid from a farm town in Indiana in Hollywood for an Army Navy game. So that is a pretty fond memory for me, and more or less just because as a plebe, you, I got a few days off and I got to act like a normal human being. Yeah, and you you beat them handily that year as well, 42 to yeah, 13. Well, um, yeah. Well, let so me ask Napoleon McCallum. Yeah, though, oh, who's a great, Napoleon, great player. Though. Great player. Yeah, exactly. uh, what's, let me ask how revered is Roger Staubach? Oh, he is. He's revered not only for what he accomplished at the Naval Academy, but what he accomplished after the Naval Academy, obviously for the Cowboys, but he is, uh, you know, he's he's running around Philadelphia. I, I bumped into him uh, earlier today, and um, he's uh, he's just an incredible person. And, um, and but at the Naval Academy, the guys the guys a legend, as you can probably uh, as you can probably imagine. Yeah, I, I go back to last year, and I thought uh, the 2016 uh, when when Army beat uh, you guys 21 to 17. That snaps their 14 year winning streak, and and I remember that 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 was emotional because it followed the death of Brandon Jackson, who was a defensive back from Army, and they all wore it was great. They all wore number 28 on their uniforms in remembrance, and you 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 felt it afterwards that again, both sides kind of knew exactly what that moment meant, especially for Army uh, snapping that streak. Well, and you know, the, you think about that entire incident. Coach Ken took his his coaching staff up to the, the services for that player at West Point, and and I think it speaks so much about the kindred spirits of these two um, of these two teams and these two staffs that you know that would go on in Army's program, and the Navy coaches and the captains of the Naval Academy would go up and and support their you know they're really their brothers um, in the, in that uh, experience. Uh, listen, before I let you get out of here, and how about the work you're doing with USAA? And I was oh. telling my producer, Josh, I was like, oh, I'm going to remember because of my father. And he started chuckling, oh. but um, the, the work you guys are doing. Well, thank you. It's uh, It's been a heroic year for our members. Um, you know, just four hurricanes, 
uh, the wildfires in Northern California. We're right now, the wildfires in Southern California are just horrific. And, uh, you know, this is, this is when, uh, we're here, we're here to serve. And it's been, um, it's been an incredible year for our 33,000 employees and just coming to, coming to work every day to support the, the people who've supported us and sacrificed. So I'm, I'm so proud of my team, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to get everybody through the holidays safe um, with everything going on in Southern California and, uh, you know, get us into 2018 um, and ready to take it on again. Yeah, and it'll be tomorrow again, Army, Navy. Army comes in 8-3, Navy 6-5, and five, 3 o'clock on CBS, which is always kind of a, the ritual, the rite of passage with that game. Um, <laughs> listen, before I let you get out of here, just convey again to the listening audience what this game really means um, for these young men. Well, look, this is, uh, thank you for asking me to do that. This is, um, it's special. I mean, these guys are going to, they're going to graduate and they're going to go serve their country. And part of why we love USA being a part of this game is is, uh, the highlight and showcase, the sacrifices, these, the young men on the field, but also the young men and women, both the cadets and the midshipmen that are going to go off and serve their country and, and, and make those sacrifices. And, we live in a world with all sorts of things going on, and to think that these folks um, six months from now, eight months from now, are going to be going out and to protect our freedoms and make those sacrifices away from their families. I, I have a son in the Navy who's currently deployed and away from his family and, and a young son, and um, there's not a day goes by I don't think about uh, the sacrifice he's making for our country. And that's really what tomorrow's all about, us honoring them and their families and the sacrifices they made for us. Yeah, and I'll give you full disclosure. This was um, right around a year ago uh, when this game was played last year. My father passed, and I thought it was oh. fitting that Army won. But we would always oh, have bets wow. with my cousin because, like I said, he was in uh, the Army Reserves, but he went to the Naval Academy. Oh, and he would call and great. just give it to my father for 10 to 12 straight years. So oh. it was fitting last year that oh. they broke the streak. So I will say this. As nice as a man as you are, I will have to root for Army tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's fair enough. All right, I mean, well, I'll, I'll leave this as go Navy, beat Army, and you can finish it the way you want to finish it. I just think it's going to be a fascinating game. It's always a fun, and uh, really I appreciate uh, you guys working with us and uh, jumping on board for a couple moments. Thank you. Thanks. It's truly an honor, right. and um, we'll see you. All right. Take care. Right, uh, Carl Liebert again, uh, CEO of USAA. I, I gotta, I'm got sorry. I got I to gotta go with uh, I gotta go with the father. I got to go with my old man. It's got to be Army.